wonderful to be, to be together again and today I want us to turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 22 and we'll be reading from verses 15 to 22. Then the Pharisees went and plotted how they might entangle him in his talk and they sent to him their disciples with the Herodians saying, teacher we know that you are true and teach the way of God in truth. Nor do you care about anyone, for you do not regard the person of men. Tell us therefore, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, why do you test me, you hypocrites? Show me the tax money so they brought him a denarius. And he said to them, whose image and inscription is this? And they said to him, Caesar's. And he said to them, render therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. And when they had heard these words, they marveled and left him and went their way. You know, even if Jesus had no claim to fame and he proved himself to be many, many things, he would be regarded as one of the world's greatest teachers. Friends and foes alike called him teacher. When some of the cynics came, as we have just read to Jesus, they had a testing question. And they began by saying, teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of God in truth. In the gospel narrative, Jesus is called teacher more than 50 times. Jesus devoted large portions of his time and, and strength to the ministry of teaching. 
And yet you cannot study the, the life of Jesus without a consideration of his teaching ministry. I would say he was the greatest teacher that ever lived. Studying the master's teaching method will open up for us a new window on Jesus himself. We'll also have an impact on the world if we seriously consider and faithfully practice Jesus' teachings. Let's take note of why Jesus is the greatest teacher. You see, the first thing we need to note is he has something valuable to say. If anyone had anything to say that was any value or worth listening to, it was Jesus. You see, some teachers use good techniques, but they, what they say is of little value. You know, you hear them, they, they sound great, they're full of words, but you think, what on earth was all that about? Jesus, however, had something vital to say. When Jesus taught, and what he taught, it applied to everyone. One of the most amazing characteristics of Jesus' subject matter was its universal appeal. He spoke with scholars in the temple and synagogue. He rode in boats and conversed with fishermen. He walked the streets and roads teaching people. And one of the gospel writers said in Mark 12:37. And the common people heard him gladly. He had this ability to, to relate to all people. They, they were willing to listen to him. Other teachers speak of important issues. And we, and we can't discount the importance of teaching language, science, geography, and other subjects. But Jesus taught about vital life issues. Every generation seeks to know, who am I? Why am I here? Where am I going? People relate to Jesus because he spoke words they desperately needed to hear. He had the answers. The second thing to note is he knows how to say it. Having something to say and knowing how to say it makes you know, a really beautiful combination. Jesus had something to say and he used effective techniques to get the message across. Jesus taught in such a way that his message was immediately arresting. It was readily intelligible. You could, you could, you could understand what he was saying to you and it was permanently memorable. Whether you accept what he said or not, you couldn't forget. To accomplish this, he used the figurative element of his teaching. He used impressive sayings, such as phrases that hit the mind and stick. For example, we read in Matthew 16, 26. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul. You see, statements like that made people pause and think. And not just think on the surface, but, but think deeply. Matthew 23, 12. We also read what Jesus says. And whoever exalts himself will be humble. And he who humbles himself will be exalted. Also, we have an example, Luke 12, 15. And he said to them, take heed and beware of covetousness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. See, he said things that made you stop in your tracks. You know, there are many people who want to accumulate things, want possessions, chasing after possessions. But hearing a statement like this will make you stop, step back and think. He also used humour. He had an amazing sense of humour. 
And one prominent element in Jesus' teaching was the parable. The simple story is one of the most ancient and most useful teaching methods. And Jesus' parables had the power to put deep truths of God in a simple, appealing manner. Jesus was an authoritative teacher. He did not depend on tradition, nor did he have to support his teaching with quotes from other teachers. And that's so amazing. He, you see, he was the word, he was truth itself. So whatever he said, he didn't have to, to quote other teachers or philosophers or people well known to others to, to validify what he said. He spoke the truth and people knew what he said was the truth. But although Jesus was authoritative, he did not force his teachings on anyone but allowed others to follow him at will. It was volitional. He delivered the truths of the kingdom. He let people know that God wanted to enter their world here and now. He, he, he taught that God was establishing and inaugurating his kingdom. He showed them what the kingdom looked like. What, was, what the expectations of the kingdom were. And as people listened to him, he never forced anyone to do what he said. He gave them the truth. He taught them, and it was entirely up to them of their own free will to accept what he said or to reject. But the way that Jesus taught, once you heard him, you couldn't get his words out of your head. If you accepted him and followed him, you followed his truth. If you rejected him and what he said, you couldn't forget his words. Jesus was an amazing teacher. What he said transformed so many lives. What he, what he said caused people to recognize who he was. For example, that uh, Roman centurion, he, he sent... For, for Jesus, this man was respected. He was a man of authority. And he, he loved his servant. And he wanted his servant to be healed. And so he came to Jesus and, and asked Jesus to heal his servant. And Jesus was willing to go to his home. He was willing to go to his home and speak the word and do what was necessary. But that centurion recognized that Jesus had an authority, an authority in his word, an authority about him, a power, an ability to follow through whatever he said. And he said, I am a centurion. I'm a man that's under Roman authority. I am over men, and if I say to one, do this or to do that or to go there, whatever I say, because my authority is backed by Rome, they will do it without hesitation. But he says, I recognize you have a greater authority. You don't have to come to my house. Just speak the word. And if you speak the word, my servant will be healed. He knew the power of Jesus' words. He knew that Jesus was someone that come from God, sent from God, and therefore what he said had power. And he realized that he could act upon the word of Jesus. He said, I'm not worthy for you to come to my house, but just speak the word. What tremendous faith. If we can listen to what Jesus says, if we can exercise faith in what he says, if we can take him at his word, we will see the power of God at work in our lives. Hallelujah. He's got the power. He's got the authority to bring about change. I think about the journey he took that woman the well on when he told her, that he was the living water. And if she drank of him, drank of the water that he would give her, she would never thirst again. She believed his words. As he was talking to her, as he was teaching her biblical truths, 
then something happened in her mind and she came in alignment with that which had been spoken of the promised Messiah who was to come. She said, one is to, us, is to come and he will teach us all things. And he said, I that speak to you am he. She said, the Christ is to come and when he comes, he will teach us all all things. Here in front of this woman was the greatest teacher and by his words and the way he spoke, even early in the conversation when he, when he spoke to her and he told her about the water that he would give her, if only she knew who it was that was speaking to him, she would ask him to give her a drink to give him a drink. To, yes, he would give her a drink. He was asking her to give him a drink. But he was saying, if you know who it is that's talking to you, you would ask of me and I would give you living water. In that conversation, as he was unfolding spiritual truths to her, she recognised this was no ordinary man. And as he took her on a journey, as he spoke to her, she received life-transforming words. Her life was forever changed. By listening to him, she knew that others needed to hear him. He told her in just a moment of time <laughs> what she felt was everything that he knew about her. He just honed in on her life situation. And because he revealed to her his truths, it opened up to her everything about her life. And you know what she did? She left her water pot and she ran into the city and she said, come and see a man who told me all about myself. All he said to her was that what she said to him was the truth. She didn't have one husband. She's had many. But in knowing the truth about her, in hearing what he said, it transformed her life. He penetrated the surface and went to the, the, the very core, the very root of her problem. She would never be the same. And in an instant, she became an evangelist. She ran into the city and said, come and see a man. And the thing was, this woman who had had many men in her lives, this woman who was a social outcast, when the men of the city heard what she had said, the Bible tells us that they went, they went to see Jesus for themselves and revival broke out and they said, we, we, we've, we've heard him for ourselves. Not just because you told us, but we have heard him for ourselves. And in hearing what Jesus had to say, in hearing his teachings, in accepting his style, as he introduced them to the kingdom of God, many, many, many lives were changed. Samaria was never the same again. Ha! Ah, they followed him at will. They followed him because they chose to. They heard what the woman said and they went and they heard him for themselves. The third thing to note is that Jesus embodies what he teaches. You see, many teachers can communicate effectively to students in the classroom. They're, they're, they're very good in the classroom, very effective in the classroom setting. But few have the ability to combine what they teach with what they do. For example, you can find that coaches can be good coaches, but not necessarily outstanding athletes. They can tell people what to do and they can make players brilliant, but they themselves are not outstanding. 
But Jesus embodied what he taught in living. Jesus lived out his lessons for others. He taught his followers to forgive injuries from others and he forgave wholeheartedly. He taught the importance of prayer and prayed all night long. He spoke of the necessity for service and self-sacrifice and he took up a towel and washed his disciples' feet. He spoke about brotherhood and went to the homes of the despised and sat at their tables and called them friends and brothers. Jesus furnished a live example of his teaching in action. He practiced what he taught. He didn't just say, do as I say, but not as I do. The two for him married. He was everything he said. Other teachers tell what to do, but they cannot give the energy to do it. Jesus tells us how to live and he gives within us by, and he lives within us, sorry, by his Holy Spirit to provide energy for accomplishing God's will. The Apostle Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4.13, one of my most favourite verses. It's not us to do, but he does it, the work in us. You have an opportunity to learn under life's greatest teacher, Jesus Christ. He invites you to enrol in his school and you can enlist today at the hearing of my voice. Open your life to him in faith. In a world where things are so unclear and confusing, we have Jesus. Let us look to him for help and guidance. By his Holy Spirit, he will guide us into all truth. He will show us the way we should take. He is the greatest teacher even today. He has not changed. He will never change. He's truth itself. God bless you. Equipping the saints, reaching the lost, WWMF. We invite you in, we welcome you in, WWMF. Equipping the saints.